Okay, so welcome back. And so now this video is going to be about um, the types of error that we can do. So we're going to, that we can get in a hypothesis test. So we're going to talk about the data. We're going to talk about two types of error and how that relates to our hypothesis testing. And then we're going to bring it all together uh, in the end. So the first thing we're going to do is last time we talked about the hypotheses, the different hypotheses, the sets of hypotheses. So this time, let's talk about um, types of error that we could make, okay? Because again, nothing's perfect, right? Hypothesis testing, it, we're trying to use hypothesis testing. Remember, it's a statistical tool that helps us make decisions about a claim, right? So either it's gonna, we're gonna reject the claim or we're gonna fail to reject the claim, right? We're gonna fail, we're gonna reject the null hypothesis or we're gonna fail to reject the null hypothesis, okay? But because it's based on sample data, right? We could make an error, right? We could make the wrong decision based on the data, right? So now let's talk about the types of error that we have. So let's, let's I'm gonna draw this box and th this is gonna help um, show you what I mean. Okay, so let's draw this box here. And so in this box, I'm going to divide it into four quadrants. And up here, I'm going to have the null hypothesis. And the null hypothesis is either going to be true or false. Those only two options. Either the assumption is true or the assumption is false if we assume the null, right? So the null will either be true or it'll be false, right? Now, what are we? What are the decisions that we have? Well, we're either going to reject the null hypothesis or we're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis, and that's based on the sample data. So, based on the data, right? The data is going to lead us to either reject the null or we're going to fail to reject. And so those are the only two options we have. So now based on the data, we're either going to reject the null or fail to reject the null. And then in reality, the null is either going to be true or false. Okay. Now, if we use the data and the data leads us to reject the null, but the null is true, then we don't want to reject it. If the null is true and we're assuming the null is true, we don't want to reject that assumption if indeed the null is true, right? So if we reject the null and it is indeed true, then that is an error. And the type of error we call that is type one. Okay. And now, if the null is false and the data leads us to reject the null, then that's a correct decision, right? We should reject the null if it is false. Okay. Now, what if the null is true and we fail to reject the null? So we fail to reject the assumption that the null is true and in, it finds out that the null is, is indeed true. So that means we made a correct decision. We don't want to reject if it's true. So this would be a correct decision. Now, the last one is where if the null hypothesis is indeed false and we fail to reject the null hypothesis, then we did make another error, right? We, we did not reject when we should have, right? So this would also be an error. And so this type of error is called type two. Okay. so. In both of these cases, we make an error. Now, depending on the circumstances, one error may be um, worse or more severe than the other error. But we're going to look at examples of that. But in some circumstances, type 1 error is going to be much worse than making a type 2 error or vice versa. Okay? So we'll look at examples of that. Now, let me explain one thing. So... We're going to define, now I'm going to tell you what these type 1 error and type 2 error represent statistically, okay? Especially when it, we're, we're, when it 
um, when it involves hypothesis testing. So type one error, if we take, let's say, you know, we don't want to make a type one error, we don't want to make a type two error, we want to avoid those, right? So we want to make the probability of making those errors small, right? So if we take the probability of making a type one error, okay? So that probability, we want that to be small. So if we, if the null hypothesis is true, we don't want to reject it. So we want to make the probability of that error small. Well, this probability is alpha. So remember, all those times we were talking about alphas there in the tails, alphas, the significance level, or the uh, you know part of the confidence level, you know one minus the confidence level for confidence intervals. Well, alpha is the area in the tails. Well, now what we're going to actually look at alpha as being, it's the probability of making a type one error. So that's what we're going to look at the area in the tail or tails, depending on the test we're going to do, right? So it's either going to be a one tail test or a two tail test. The probability of making a type one error is the area in either one tail or two tails if it's a two tail test. Okay. So now, what about this one here? So this is alpha. So this is related alpha. What about this one? Well, the probability of making a type two error is defined as beta. So it's going to be beta. So beta is the probability of, uh, of making a type two error. So again, we don't want to. We want to avoid these. We want these both to be small, okay? And in fact, we talk about the power of a test. And the power of a test is actually defined as one minus beta. Oops. Okay, so in the power of a test, it's going to be 1 minus beta. So we want the probability of making a type 2 error to be small, which is, it, again, another way of looking at it is we want the power of the test to be large. Okay. Now, in these two here, we're not going to do a lot in this class. It's beyond the scope of this class, uh, but realize a couple of things. Um, when we try to control for alpha, when we try to make alpha really small, what happens is our probability of making a type 2 error tends to go up. Okay? Uh, so there's a, there seems to be an inverse relationship here where if we try to control and make this really small alpha, then beta tends to get bigger. Um, so in order to control for both, we increase the sample size. Okay, so if we fix a particular value of alpha and we want to make beta sufficiently small, then we'll, use, we'll increase the sample size and make it really big. Okay, um, just, just to keep in mind. Okay, but typically what we're going to spend most of our time for this chapter looking at is alpha. Okay, uh, we'll talk about alpha and beta and see which one's worse, and, and we're, we're going to do a couple of examples of that, but realize that we're not going to do much else with beta other than that, okay? As far as the power of the test, typically in industry, uh, the most common power uh, that we use, or the, uh, as far as the uh, power of a test, is 0.8, okay? So you're looking at a beta of 0.2, which seems to be pretty big compared to alpha levels that we've been dealing with, like 0.01, 0.05, 0.1, but just realize that that's, again, it's typical, okay? Um, it might be lower, depends on the industry, depends on expert opinion, things like that, okay? Okay, so what else, um, let's see here. Um, Okay, so let's look at some examples. Okay, so let me 
So here's an example. Okay. Okay, so it says, suppose the null hypothesis, HO, is Frank's rock climbing equipment is safe. Let's assume that's the assumption we're making. That's the null hypothesis. So we're going to assume, so HO is that Frank's rock climbing equipment is safe. Okay? Okay, so now let's draw our square here. And so again, HO is either true or false. And as far as the data is concerned, we're either going to reject The null or don't reject the null. Okay? So now, again, this is, oops, type one error. Type two error. Correct. Correct. Okay. So now, type 1 error, what's type 1 error? Type 1 error is if we reject the null and the null is true. So in other words, we reject the null when we shouldn't have, when we should not have. Okay? So the null is true and we reject it. So that means Frank's rock climbing equipment is actually safe. But we reject that assumption and we, and we say that it's not safe based on the data, okay? That's one error, okay? The other error, the type two error says, <coughs> the null hypothesis is false and we fail to reject. This is where, okay, we're assuming that Frank's rock climbing equipment is safe but it's false. That's not true. But we fail to reject the assumption. Which is worse, this one or this one? Well, if we, if we, re if we reject the null and it's true, well, no harm, no foul, right? His equipment is actually safe, but we decided on the data that it's not, so we reject that assumption, and let's say we got some new equipment or, or we did some checks or uh, whatever the case may be, but um, no harm, no foul, right? No harm to Frank, right? Now, if the assumption, if the, um, the null hypothesis is actually false and we fail to reject that assumption, right? So here's what we're assuming. We're assuming it's safe, right? If it turns out that that's wrong, and we fail to reject that assumption, then we put Frank in harm's way. Frank could go rock climbing with faulty equipment and have a serious interest, industry, industry, have a serious injury or even die, right? So making a type two error in this situation is much worse than a type one error, okay? Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense, okay? So now, what about this one? So here's another example. So let's do this. Okay. So let's say, suppose the null hypothesis is this. The victim of an automobile accident arriving at the emergency room 
at the hospital is infected with HIV. So that's the assumption. That's what we're assuming. So that's the null hypothesis. So we're assuming that this is true. So we're assuming that this victim in an automobile accident is arriving, that, that's arriving at the emergency room at the hospital is infected with HIV. That's the assumption. Now, in this case, if that's true and we reject it, then what's happening here? We're putting the doctor's health and other people's health at risk because they will, they're, they're um, where we're, we are rejecting the null hypothesis when we shouldn't. And so if we reject the assumption that he has HIV and believe that he doesn't, then we operate under the wrong assumption, we were under the wrong conclusion, and we're basically treating a man without proper protection. And so we could contract HIV, or the doctors could, the nurses, and anybody else at the hospital that's in contact with them could contract HIV and put their own health and life in danger. Okay, so that's one error. The other one is, well, the, the null is false, and we fail to reject it. Well, in this case here, he really doesn't have HIV. We're assuming he does, but he really doesn't. But we fail to reject this assumption, so we're gonna operate under the assumption that he does have HIV, but he really doesn't. In that case, again, in this case, no harm, no foul to the doctors. They're taking precautions when they really don't have to, but it doesn't hurt anybody, okay? So in this case, the type one error is much worse to make than the type two error, okay? Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. So that's just the relationship between understanding type one and type two error, and hey, different circumstances will tell you whether which one is, uh, which one is the worst error to make, and it really depends on the circumstances, okay, and what you're assuming, okay. So now, let's see here. <clears throat> okay, so here's what we're going to do. So this is where I'm going to um, stop and I'm going to come back and I'm going to start the whole hypothesis testing procedure and I'm going to use an example. And we're going to start using examples. I'm going to go through first hypothesis testing involving the mean and we're going to see how alpha level plays a part. The, um, Type, the probability of a type 1 error. Okay, so we're going to talk about alpha. So the alpha is going to be the significance level. And we need to know alpha before the problem, before we start the process. So alpha, the significance level, is the level that we're going to conduct the hypothesis tests at. It's very important that the alpha level is given at the beginning before any data is collected, before any um, analytics is done because it's the alpha level that is going to determine when we reject or fail to reject the null, and you'll see that uh, next time. But alpha is going to be very important because that is going to be our level of significance. And so remember in the other video I said, hey, the big idea is if our probability is sufficiently small or significantly small, we're going to reject the null. Well, what is significantly small? What are we going to compare it with? Alpha. The significance level alpha is going to be the marker or the rule that we're going to, or not the rule, but it's going to be the, the value that we're going to compare our probability to, okay? And if our probability of a particular sample statistic is less than our significance level, 
we are going to reject the null. <clears throat> so now we're getting to the rule. So now you know what alpha is and what it means. It's the probability of making a type one error. So we want to make sure that that is sufficiently small. So we're going to fix that. So that's always fixed at a particular value. Once we fix that value, then we can run our test and we can compare our probability to our significance level and then decide what, is going, what we're going to do, either reject the null or fail to reject the null. So that'll be next time. And so the next video, we're going to actually go through the seven steps with an example. And I'm going to go through the two different methods in the next video. There are two methods of doing a hypothesis test, the traditional method and the p-value method. I will walk through both of those next time with one example. And then we'll continue on and we'll keep doing example after example after example. And I'll also introduce uh, how to do it with the tables and the calculator. And you'll see that once you see how I do it on the calculator, you will be, it'll be easy peasy. I mean, the calculator makes this so quick and easy. Okay, and I, I would recommend using the calculator. I will show you the, the both methods step by the in detail so you understand why they work. But after you understand why they work and where all these numbers come from and why we use them, we can use the calculator. Okay? Other than that, that's it for this video and I'll see you next time.